going back to you know one of, the, one of the interesting things about WhatsApp, you know, in, in living in the Bay Area, is that I, I, I talk to my colleagues or my, my peers here, the ones that are outside of the I guess the Brazilian or maybe India kind of uh, universe, and it, it, it's it's they're like, what, what are you talking about? How come there is this this, this huge thing? I mean, it's, many of them know that you know Facebook acquired it, and and the understanding was like you know a, a very big uh, price tag, but you know they don't understand the uh, 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 I guess the impact and, and, the, and the dimension of uh, of the platform. So, so why do you think that you know WhatsApp took off so much in, in, in markets like Brazil or India or Europe versus you know what, what's happening here in the US? Um, as we looked at um, a variety of different markets, I think there were different triggers that um, fostered growth in our network, um, maybe a little bit faster than they did in the United States. Uh, one of which, I mean, to be brutally frank, was the cost of SMS in general. Um, and, you know, in the United States in 2009, people were already starting to purchase unlimited SMS plans. And so to them, they were equating unlimited SMS with free SMS. The, the dirty secret is it's not free. It's just unlimited. So you're paying 10 bucks a month or 15 bucks a month, and you're just not thinking about it. And your teenage daughter is sending 16,000 messages a week, a month, and you're like, okay, it's unlimited, I don't care. Well, as it turns out in many other countries, it's not unlimited, it's metered. And as such, when your teenage daughter sends 16,000 messages, <laughs> you're pretty darn unhappy, right? So, you're, you're, you're darn grumpy, right? Um, so, you know, cost was certainly a factor. Um, there was an interesting effect that we saw in Europe especially, which was the border effect. Uh, insofar as, you know, France and Belgium, neighbors, uh, you know, for them to send a message across the borders, you know, there's a surcharge, there's a tariff, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas, you know, in the United States, that's equivalent to sending uh, a message between West Virginia and Virginia. It's, it, there shouldn't be there, right? They're, they're next door to each other. Why should there be this tariff? And, you know, we neutralize that, right? <coughs> it's by sending the message over the data network, the, the cross-border tariffing, essentially the long-distance charges go away. So there's another cost variable. You know, the third um, aspect is our product works, right? Yeah. We, we spent a lot of time, you know, working on bad network situations so that our product would be robust in bad network situations. Anecdotally for me, there was a great example of uh, Egypt users writing in and saying, hey, I have these problems. And, you know, me going through and combing their logs and trying to figure out what was wrong with their setup and their carrier and their handset and, and making it work for them, right? And we went painstakingly through a lot of these iterations to make it work in, in a variety of different networks, geographies, handsets, etc. Um, it was not a small amount of work and it took years to do, but you know, through the culmination of those years, we have a product that works in a very robust fashion. I, um, I, uh, I'm sure, as you know, in Brazil and all across Latin America, the mobile phone is turning into more and more of a access to financial services, um, sending money to friends and family, purchasing airtime, etc. I was wondering if you have any plans along those lines um, to use WhatsApp as that sort of digital wallet, mobile money, that sort of thing. Um, no media plans. Digital, digital currency is a tricky one relative to banking regulation. Um, and it's especially difficult to do on a global basis to the point that we've, we've really um, stayed away from it, uh, partly due to our size and our desire to focus. Um, we've been more oriented on helping people uh, communicate on a real-time basis. So it's more in, our, more in our line of sight to do something like real-time video communication than it is to do uh, payment and online transactions at the current time. So in Brazil, that's 75% of the market is low income, and as we learned this morning, 80% are prepaid. And I'm just curious if what you're hearing is from telecommunication companies. What are their reactions, the OI, the Claro, the Vivo, uh, with what WhatsApp is doing and undercutting their SMS fees? And if you're seeing any pressure from those companies or from government regulations? So as a general rule with uh, telecommunications companies, we do our best to partner with them as, as we can. Um, if anything, what we try to help them understand is, is that we're helping them build their data businesses. And that the long-term trend, independent of us, 
is for telecommunications to move onto the data network uh, in, in some form or another. So uh, speaking specifically about carriers in Brazil, um, the, the three I can speak about are Tim, uh, Claro, and Vivo. And you know, we have different relationships with each, right? Tim, apparent, seems to really understand it, really get it. They're, they've been pro, you know, pushing data packages, uh, and that's worked really well. Um, and, and they've also worked with us on bug fixes and things like that. Uh, Claro is a partner of ours, uh, and so you know, we have an outstanding relationship with them. Uh, it's been more of a marketing relationship, but it's worked well. Uh, Vivo has been uh, more sort of reticent to, uh, you know, to what we're doing. Uh, but you know, you're going to always have the early adopters, the fast followers, and the laggards. And you know, I think you can understand where Vivo falls in that. 